Up next on the topic of management of chronic gastritis and precancerous condition of gastric cancer, courtesy by Osuka Company. Please give a round of applause for our moderator, Professor Latagon Vilaishon, MD, PhD, FACG, and AGAF, Professor of Medicine, Gastroenterology Unit, Department of Medicine, Thammasat University, Thailand. Thank you so much for your kind introductions. The, for the next session, is going to be the academic support by Tai Osuga. Um, before we go into the sessions, just briefly let you know that we have many participants uh, in many countries, such as in the US and Canada online, um, many parts in North Asia, and uh, many countries in the ASEAN country. Um, our next topic is going to be um, the management of chronic gastritis and uh, how to reverse the pre-cancerous lesions of the stomach cancers. Um, the speaker uh, from Chulalongkorn University is Professor Lapat Pitayanon. Professor Lapat, um, she is the associate professor of medicine from Divisions of Gastroenterology, Department of Medicine, Chulalongkorn University, Thailand. Professor Lapat uh, received her MD and GI training from Chulalongkorn University, and she continues her training in um, McGill University with uh, Professor Alan Bargans and at the uh, McMaster University with uh, Professor Paul Smyoide. Uh, Professor Lapat, please. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, um, Ajahn Latakon, Professor Latakon, for your kind introduction. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the ASEAN Gastro 2022 to inviting me, for inviting me to talk um, about one of my favorite topic, uh, which is the management of chronic atrophic gastritis and pre condition of gastric cancer. I have nothing to disclose. The outline of my talk today is about the gastric cancer, pre conditions, and how to manage those lesions. Why gastric cancer is important? This is the data from the um, um, latest information from Global Can 2020. Gastric cancer is very important because we had the new cases more than 1 million per year. It is the fifth most common cancer worldwide. And importantly, this gastric cancer is the fourth leading cause of death worldwide as well. In Japan, it is, it, um, this country had the highest incidence of gastric cancer in male, and Mongolia has the highest gas, incidence of gastric cancer in female. Eastern Asia is the top rank of gastric cancer uh, incidence in this world. And also Eastern Europe, South America, Western Asia, and Southern Europe also high, had a, a medium to high incident of gastric cancer. This is the well-known um, schema of gastric cancer development, especially for intestinal type gastric cancer. From the normal gastric mucosa, if the patient had the CAC-A positive H. pylori infection, which is the um, virulence type of H. pylori infection, it can, um, those patients can develop multifocal atrophic gastritis and then turn to intestinal metaplasia, dysplasia, and eventually gastric cancer. How can we diagnose the pre-malignant lesion? Because as we know that all of the patients with, with the pre cancerous lesion of gastric cancer don't have any symptoms. So we have to know the risk factor of um, gastric cancer development. Before endoscopy, you should know that male uh, family history of gastric cancer, ethnic background that I told earlier, are the risk factor of gastric cancer development. On top of that, if that patient had the history of gastric cancer with the estrogen receptor positive, or they had the persistent H. pylori infection, especially with the history of atrophic or intestinal metaplasia, they have the high risk of gastric cancer development as well. So the endoscopies should pay attention on the atrophic gastritis or intestinal metaplasia in those patients during endoscopy. 
Any technique for helping malignant lesions detection? The answer is yes. The image enhanced endoscopy or IEE, in addition to the white light endoscopy, can improve the gastric pre-malignant lesion detection, such as the intestinal metaplasia or trophic gastritis. This is the example of the IEE for detect atrophic gastritis. If you look at this lesion, you can see the difference between atrophic gastritis and pre-malignant, uh, sorry, and uh, the normal gastric mucosa uh, along with the red line here. From white light endoscopy, you also, um, you are able to see the atrophic gastritis, but if you use the IEE, for example, another example of IEE is the autofluorescein um, image enhanced endoscopy, just only one click uh, during endoscopy, you can see the, the um, abnormal lesion really clear from the endoscopic pictures. There, there is also the grading of severity of um, atrophic gastritis by Kimura Takimoto classification. Um, the concept of this grading is the more proximal or more laterally atrophic gastritis have a more chance of pre, um, the intestinal metaplasia or high grade dysplasia or eventually gastric cancer development. They also have another classification of um, grading severity of gastric cancer, which is from the pathological result. Uh, we call this is the operative links on gastric atrophy or OGA. We have to take the biopsy from antrum and corpus to evaluate the um, severity of atrophic gastritis. Um, if, we the, if the pathologist found the um, markedly decrease of the gastric gland, um, it will be severe atrophic gastritis. Move to the next pre-malignant lesion, which is the gastric intestinal metaplasia. From the AGA technical review on gastric intestinal metaplasia um, two years ago, they say that the prevalence of GIM is around 5%. The incidence of gastric intestinal metaplasia or to develop gastric cancer is around 0.2% per year. Importantly, 15% of um, GIM can develop to dysplasia at three to five years. The risk factor to development of gastric cancer in those patients are the family history of gastric cancer, incomplete um, GIM, incomplete type of GIM, and extensive GIM. This is the example of the image, endoscopy image of intestinal metaplasia. If you use the white light endoscopy, the GIM lesion quite faint because it's just only my elevated um, white lesions on endoscopic finding. But if you use the IEE for this picture is the NBI, you can see the GIM really clear. Um, different, you can differentiate this lesion from the normal gastric mucosa better. And another um, finding from the endoscopy is the endoscopic uh, IEE with magnification, which we call light blue place. The light blue place, which is the lesion here, is this lesion um, can provide a pos uh, positive predictive value of GIM around 75% to 90%. For another endoscopic finding is the villas pattern, which has a PPV around um, 86%. And the um, light blue crest, which is another um, finding on gastric intestinal metaplasia with IEE and magnification, um, can provide a PPV around 81%. For the pathological um, um, grading severity of GIM that we call uh, operative links on gastric intestinal metaplasia or OGIM, there's also the um, you need to take the biopsy at corpus and antrum to um, 
make the diagnosis or um, make the severity grading on intestinal metaplasia. If the um, intestinal metaplasia occupy almost of the gland of gastric gland here, it will be classified as severe IM, which provides score three. Uh, importantly, for the um, severity of all gym, the state three or four is only the 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 um, things that we have to concern because the patient with all gym state three or four can develop to um, dysplasia or gastric cancer more than others. Recently because of the um, um, difficulty of um, diagnosis of the intestinal metaplasia by pathology. Sometimes it's, it's difficult to, to um, grading by pathologists. The, um, we have the another endoscopic grading of intestinal metaplasia that we call ECGIM. Um, we also need to take, um, no, we just only use the endoscopy to look at the antrum in Sisula and corpus, only three area with the percentage of GIM. No GIM, less than 30% and more than 30% of area of evaluation. The score was, is linked from zero to two. If the patient has score more than four, it can call it, this score not correlated with the OGM state three to four, which is a significant finding for developed gastric cancer. This is the flow chart of um, gastric cancer, um, gastric intestinal metaplasia and um, chronic atrophic gastritis management. This um, flow chart was developed 10 years ago by the European uh, team. Um, from this guideline, from this flow chart, you can see that the chromo magnified chromo endoscopy or IEE with magnification should be offered should be done in the patient that we suspected of chronic atrophic gastritis or intestinal metaplasia. They suggest um, at least four biopsy, two from antrum and two from body, and um, to um, evaluate the spreading of the intestinal metaplasia or atrophic gastritis. When you find the atrophy or intestinal metaplasia just only antrum, this will be classified as low risk of gastric cancer development. Those patients need H. pyri infection if they had, but do not need to follow up endoscopy. But if you find the atrophic, atrophy or intestinal metaplasia at both antrum and body, those patients will classify as high risk of gastric cancer development. They also need H. pyri infection if they had, and then follow up endoscopy every three years. Recently, two years ago, the British Society of Gastroenterology um, proposed the guideline for management of this lesion. From a chronic atrophic gastritis or intestinal metaplasia from white light endoscopy, those patients need systemic endoscopy with image enhancement endoscopy to better um, detection and classification the intestinal metaplasia and atrophic gastritis. Um, when they do the um, endoscopic grading, they need the, to take the biopsy at the lesion of intestinal metaplasia or atrophic gastritis with the Sydney protocol biopsy. If those patients has the high risk, which means the um, intestinal metaplasia or atrophic gastritis extend to corpus area, they need to do the three-year endoscopic surveillance with image enhanced endoscopy. But if the, those lesions just localize at the antrum or in cistula, this will be low risk of cancer cancer development and no need to surveillance. In addition, if the patient had a family history of gastric cancer or persistent HP infection, if they don't have any pre-malignant lesion, they also need the three yearly surveillance endoscopy as well. Last two years, another guideline from AGA um, proposed the recommendation for um, gastric intestinal metaplasia management. They recommend 
um, to test the HPV infection in those patients, followed by eradication with the strong recommendation and moderate quality of evidence. They do not support the routine use of endoscopic surveillance and also do not um, recommend to do the repeat endoscopy less than one year in patients with the intestinal metaplasia. But they allow to do that less than one year follow-up endoscopy in patients with high risk of gastric cancer. These two recommendations were supported by the um, uh, conditional recommendation and very low quality of evidence. This is the data from Thailand. This data uh, is from Chulalongkorn Hospital. We uh, follow up the patient with gastric intestinal metaplasia for five years, and we found that only, only pathological diagnosis of incomplete type of intestinal metaplasia is the risk factor of high-grade dysplasia or early gastric cancer development from one to four years. We also found that pepsinogen level, the OCA staging or OTIM staging, were not um, associated with high-grade dysplasia or gastric cancer development because almost all pa our patients had the uh, state one or two of OGIM or OGA staging, which means that um, this population had a very low um, uh, incidence of atrophic change of, of um, gastric mucosa. This is the recent data from, from Thailand, from Thammasat University. Um, this study um, followed up the patient, uh, around 360 patients with intestinal metaplasia for two years. And they found that the risk of persistent or progression of intestinal metaplasia or, um, or progression to dysplasia uh, are the, eight, the elderly patients who are um, more than 65 years old, persistent HP infection and uh, DM, and had the underlying of DM with odd ratio around two. So this is my last slide, last but not least. I think um, this is the, the, the things that I would like to um, talk, to summarize from, our, from my review. Um, this is the recommendation from my opinion. You can use this recommendation, adjust this recommendation in your practice. It depends on your um, uh, prevalence of gastric cancer, intestinal metaplasia, or trophic gastritis in your country. If the patient has a suspicious lesion of gastric intestinal metaplasia or trophic gastritis from endoscopic binding, they need to assess the HP infection and treat it if they had the infection. Um, I recommend to do the biopsy for uh, evaluate the extension of um, atrophic gastritis and intestinal metaplasia, and also classify the type of intestinal metaplasia because the extensive type, which is um, the lesion that uh, extends to the corpus, or the pathological report of incomplete type of intestinal metaplasia are the high risk of gastric cancer development. Those patients need to do the endoscopic surveillance within um, not, not, more, not less than one year, but around one to two years with the image enhanced endoscopy. If, they can, if you find the persistent finding, they need to do the follow-up endoscopy by one or two years. But if your patient don't have any high risk of gastric cancer development. The, they don't need to do any surveillance of um, endoscopy, except the patient with high risk of gastric cancer development, for example, persistent HP infection, family history of gastric cancer. They, are, they still need to um, have uh, endoscopic surveillance with IEE at three years. Okay, so if they don't have any risk of gastric cancer development, no risk by endoscopic fighting, they don't need to do the endoscopic surveillance at all. And 
Thank you for your attention. This is my, uh, the end of my talk, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Professor Rapat, thank you so much for your fascinating talk. So right now, we still have a time. So please, Professor Sugano, you might be a good commentator because you know the plea cancels very well. Thank you, Rapat. Uh, now you are promoted to the associate professor. Congratulations. My comment is that you didn't mention about the linked color imaging. Uh, you know, it's a, another important imaging enhanced you know, endoscopy developed by Fuji. And by <clears throat> using the linked color imaging, so-called LCI, uh, you can identify the uh, uh, intestinal metaplasia as a uh, purple color. You may notice, and uh, they published a nice paper in Annals of Internal Medicine, which is a prestigious journal, showing that the, uh, with linked color imaging, the uh, identification of differentiated uh, gastric cancer uh, increased by 50%. And Chinese group also reported uh, double score of the identification of gastric cancer because the uh, dysplastic region is surrounded by purple color intestinal metaplastic regions. The, the point is that the, uh, with this method, you don't need any magnification. You can scan all the you know, areas without any magnification and easily identify the area of uh, intestinal metaplasia. So maybe in the future, you may use a uh, link to color imaging study you know, because uh, there is very few intestinal metaplasia. I, I, I saw from your slide, Origin or Olga is not useful for identifying risk. So the, uh, in your case, I think uh, link to color imaging may not be helpful uh, because over 50% of the gastric cancer developed here in Thailand is uh, undifferentiated type or diffuse type not intestinal metaplastic type, but uh, anyway, it might be helpful to identify area of intestinal metaplasia. This is my comment. Yeah. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank yeah. you very much. Please, please. Yeah, thank you very much, Professor Ken Sugano. I think um, um, recently we have the um, uh, very model um, um, IEE, especially from um, the Fuji company, Onibus company, Pentac company, many every company would like to um, launch the modest and very high uh, resolution of image to um, find the pre-malignant lesion. I think the, the finding from the LCI is, is very interesting. Thank you very much. So they have uh, questions from the online. The, right now, as we know that uh, we have an image in hand endoscopy, like you mentioned in your slide, uh, a new technique one is TXI, the texture color enhancements from the Olympus or even the BAI outside for the Fuji films. Um, so we can detect the pre cancer lesions easier, such as the IM incomplete, complete one, or the display shears. So, how can you reverse the le these lesions somehow, even after the HP eradications, the lesions can progress to be the cancers in the future? What is the best way to? Um, Please challenge the medicines or any treatments to reverse these plea cancer lesions back to normal as much as possible, please. Thank you very much, Ajahn um, Rathagon, for, uh, for your excellent questions. But um, from the, the available evidence right now, um, we don't have any data to support using the, any medication for regress, the intestinal metaplasia or atrophic gastritis. But some study, report just only the case report about um, using the uh, mucoprotective agent cytoprotective agent for example uh, rabamipai for regress the um, intestinal metaplasia but the data is not promising right now so we need more um, sample for evaluate uh, that medication to regress the intestinal metaplasia so another the questions from the online so how you can monitor the precancer lesion, such as from the chronic gastritis, um, from the intestinal metaplasia or dysplasia, how you can monitor that one, how often you have to monitor. Okay, um, so this is from my last slide. If you 
you can follow this um, recommendation. If you have, if you see or find um, the um, extensive type of gastric intestinal metaplasia or trophic gastritis with com incomplete intestinal metaplasia, those lesions need to be monitored at least three years. But if the patient had a high risk of gastric cancer development, you may need to monitor or repeat endoscopy uh, within one to two years. Okay, but if they don't have any risk of gastric cancer development and no extensive type, no com incomplete intestinal metaplasia, they don't need to have the endoscopic surveillance. Professor Kim, I believe that in Korea they can have many of the stomach cancers. Please. Uh, uh, Kim from Korea, uh, thank you for your information, doctors. Uh, you mentioned in AGA guideline, the evidence is very low and the uh, recommendation is conditional. Your last slide recommend in extensive intestinal metaplasia, one or two year follow up your recommendation. Do you think uh, uh, is it enough evidence to recommend one or two year follow up in spite of uh, uh, low level evidence? Um, because of um, the data from Thailand, we had the data to show that if the patient had an incomplete type of intestinal metaplasia, they are, had the hazard ratio up to 14 to develop high-grade dysplasia or gastric cancer. I think for the high risk of endoscopic finding or um, pathological finding, we can use the uh, recommendation three from AGA that um, they're against using the endoscopy surveillance less than one year, except the patient with high risk of gastric cancer development. So I think um, we can adopt uh, the AGA recommendation to our practice as well. Thank you. So the time is up right now. So the, thank you so much, Professor Lapat, for your excellent talk. And the last but not least, I'd like to thank the Thai Osaka company for making these interesting sessions complete and possible. Thank you so much.